Beautiful. And up next, why don't we come back to something we already discussed before, that order matters. And why don't we work on a little challenge? And if I can ask you something, please don't dismiss this topic. This is literally the most discussed question in course Q&A because we do implement that feature later on in the project and all that, and this seems to be tripping up a lot of people. That's why I purposely, in this course iteration, recording a video in tutorial, just so we can cover this in great detail. And essentially, the challenge is following. I want you to destructure properties. So instead of user dot, user dot, user dot in JSX, destructure them out of the user, and access them directly. And I'm purposely not telling you where you should do that because you might or might not encounter the bug. And effectively, that's the whole purpose of the video. So let's start working on that. I'm going to go back to my file. Let's keep on moving. And again, the idea is that I don't want to go with user, user, user. I just want to grab the properties and nicely display them in the JSX. So what we can do, well, we can go above the return and then one by one, pull them out, right? So I can go with avatar URL, then name, then company. And I believe I also have the bio in there. And that is going to be equal to what? That is going to be equal to my user. So my state value. And now, of course, instead of user dot, user dot, user dot, I can simply select and then remove those instances. So let's go over here. And it looks like I messed it up over here a little bit. That's okay. Let me save. And if you refresh and everything still works, we are in good shape. Now, what's the purpose of this video? Well, if you're going to go above the loading, and I'm purposely going to place it over here just so you can clearly see the values. But again, typical question is this one if you place before these conditions, why we have the error. So let me move this sucker up all the way over here by user, and then let's save. And what you'll notice that we right away have big fat error in the console. And JavaScript is complaining. It says, I cannot destructure property from the user since this is null. So very, very important to keep in mind. If you have those multiple returns, if you're destructuring something, you need to do that after the conditions. Because keep in mind, this is still null. So as JavaScript is basically reading the code, okay, user is null, let's keep on moving. And even before we have hit the loading or error and all that, you right away start destructuring them from the null. And that's not going to work. There's a reason why we have those conditions. So only when we bypass both of these conditions, we will have that user. I mean, if there's an error, then of course we'll return this one. We're not even going to get to that line. So essentially we'll have the early return because if there is an error, then there is no user. This is still null. And again, this is not controversial. In the readme, I left some code examples where this is null and we cannot pull properties out of null. But this doesn't change. We right away basically just try to read properties out of the null, not out of the object. Now, after returns, after the is loading and, and the error, yes, at that point, we set user. So at that point, we should have the user object in the state. And at that point, it's great. You can definitely do so. This is going to work for sure. But before that, nope. And again, let me just emphasize this by showing you a few vanilla JS examples, because I was hoping that this is going to help you. So if you have some object, you have a property there with some kind of value, I mean, you can always go object.name. Okay, that's awesome. We can get the string. Now, what we can also do is simply go some object, and then let's say that we messed up the property, that it's not there. This is still going to work. JavaScript is going to be like, okay, that property doesn't exist. However, we cannot do this. We cannot say, hey, this is null, and then I'm going to pull something out of the null. 
JavaScript will scream, yell, and complain. We cannot do that. And also the same thing is going to work with arrays. And the reason why I'm showing you arrays example, because in one of the projects, this is what we do. We fetch a list, but I only want to display the first item. And what do I need to do? Well, I need to go with random list or whatever array you have, and then grab the first one. However, again, in the beginning, this is empty. So this will return undefined. How can there be a first item in the array if the array is empty? So again, if we're going to go here with random list, when this is just empty, and then pull out the property, let's imagine I'm trying to access some kind of property from the first item. Not cool at all. JavaScript will scream, yell, and complain. Now, if you're familiar with optional chaining, of course, you can make a good argument. Well, we can avoid all those things. And yes, you're right. A bunch of times you will actually avoid those errors if you use such approach. And we'll definitely cover optional chaining later on in this tutorial because it is a very important concept. However, the biggest takeaway from this video is that order matters. And that's why you have the error because the object is still null. So essentially, it's whatever is the default value. So now let me go back over here and then let me move this sucker all the way where I have the return. And now, of course, everything is going to work. Again, we'll have no errors.